Dr. Pavel. You know that in Colorado? Ray Moron, or Ray Miron wouldn't let us have him. He was up in the thing. All right, here we go. Now, the stick. We're going to show the stick? Sure. All right. Remember I showed the stick? Now, on Dave the Keyes. right, Dave Key on the right, but look who's on the left, Brian Smith. I just thought I'd show. Don't I look good in that shirt? Anyhow, it's almost the same, just a little bend. By the way, Brian Smith, another winner last night, Mr. Euler. I know he will be signed. For how for much? Doan gets a little over $4 million. Eric Brewer got signed today for over $4 million. And how much did the one guy get a six-year contract? It's <laughs> ridiculous. Oh, Al Shemsky, sure. Yeah, how he's, much? I don't know. He's up around... At least way over Close five. Close to six. Six one, I think. Yeah. yeah. And about a five-year contract. I've just got word that Ryan Smith, as uh, Nick said, can confirm that he's been traded. Unable to strike a deal, the Oilers send the heart and soul of their team packing. A celebration. That's why we threw a party at Sportsnet to celebrate trade deadline day. I'm Brad Fay in the Sportsnet studio. Thanks for joining us. An hour of Connected, which is primarily here to wrap up what happened in the NHL today. Ryan Smith is a fan of the Oilers' history, and he knows that the glory days yielded no greater rival for Edmonton than the New York Islanders. So how about this? The longest-serving Oiler leaves the only team he's ever played for for Long Island. It came at the 11th hour, but this deadline day certainly has its star because they'll be talking about this one for a while, and then already the speculation of whether Ryan Smith will sign back with the Oilers when he becomes a free agent this summer. Either way, Edmonton improves itself long term. They get a lot in return for Ryan Smith, but an emotional day to be sure because Ryan Smith is the face of the franchise, not to mention Gene Prince Bay is standing by at Edmonton that Mark Messier Dust has will barely be settled, especially in Edmonton, where fans, I'm sure, are still trying to digest the news that Ryan Smith is no longer a member of the Oilers. Uh, Edmonton general manager Kevin Lowe went down to the wire this afternoon trying to negotiate a new contract with Ryan Smith, but they just could not get it done. So Lowe, faced with losing Smith for nothing this summer, bit the bullet and traded him to the New York Islanders. And this is the rather stunning deal. Now, Smith is to become an unrestricted free agent July 1st. So the Islanders are willing to give up some of their future and what is really a rental. Edmonton gets uh, Robert Nielsen, who was their first round pick in 03. Ryan O'Mara, their first rounder in 05. And New York's first round draft pick in 07 as well. Mackenzie and up. Darren Drager, there are trades that we saw coming from weeks away, as in Bill Guerin. And there are trades that even though there were hints that it was going to happen, still knock you back a little bit. And Ryan Smith was one of those. Even though we knew it was a possibility, it's still drop the jaw a little bit. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, you can get into the nuts and bolts of it and talk about the negotiations, when, what happened, and how what the difference was. I think, ultimately, it was between two hundred and three hundred thousand dollars and $300,000 a year that the Oilers and Smith were apart. But here's basically what happened in my mind. Ryan Smith saw all the other players on the Oilers getting contracts, Horkoff and Hemsky and Steos and everybody else. In the past, I think in his own mind, he thought that he never really got his full due financially in Edmonton. And he decided, coming off a, a career year last year, that he was going to not give the hometown discount, and he drew a line in the sand. And he saw it 5.25 for Tongay in Calgary, and he thought, hey, I'm worth way more than him. He's not the franchise. I'm the face of the franchise. And at the same time, the Edmonton Oilers saw a $47 million cap next year, and they decided to draw a line, the line in the sand that says, you know what? We, we've got to get a grip here. And so only a couple hundred thousand dollars yeah. to, to the thing. But they drew their line in the sand because of the environment around them. And Ryan Smith drew his line in the sand, and that's why they're apart. That makes business sense. But this wasn't completely a business deal. At least the Smith family won't look at it that way. Ryan Smith is a professional. But Ryan Smith and his family haven't been through anything like this throughout his entire career, certainly professionally, dating back into junior hockey as well. He is devastated. His family is devastated. His family, Ryan Smith, are all very emotional. But based on what Bob just told us, this is the harsh reality of being a professional athlete. All right, we gave Mike Keenan an awful hard time about the Roberto Luongo trade, but did this give you flashbacks, the situation that Kevin Lowe was in, to what you were dealing with before you dealt Luongo? Well, it certainly did. And the bottom line is Kevin was in a tough position Decision, but he made a business decision and I don't want anyone to forget that Ryan made a business decision. Whatever those numbers were, they weren't going to meet. And the Luongo situation was the same. So you make the decision and you move on and you make the best deal you can. And Kevin tried to do that as he prepared for this day, as he just spoke. He did some homework ahead of time and that's the choice they made today. Both sides made a choice.
And Kevin Lowe couldn't go out and fax all the teams and say, no. hey, Ryan Smith's available, just give me a call if you want him. So he's in a quandary there. He's in a quandary as each team made deals. Kachuk gets picked up, as Bertuzzi gets picked up. All of a sudden, Forsberg goes to Nashville. Now there's less teams that have that $3.5 million cap space available to get a Ryan Smith. So he did the best deal that he possibly could. Now, Ryan Smith, from his standpoint, they couldn't negotiate your deal last year in the summer. You can't open up no. with the new CBA. So now he sits as a rental player. Rental players command a fee. Well, the only team that, well, there's a few teams in the bidding, but three good prospects for a rental player to play 25% of the season and hope to get a team in the playoffs, that to me is a fair price. Now, the other thing we really haven't talked about is the Islanders and what it does in the Eastern Conference for them. And really, it affects the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Montreal Canadiens in the sense that not necessarily knocking what they did or didn't do on trade deadline day, although you can make some questions about Montreal, but suddenly the team, perhaps their main competition, is a little bit better, a lot better today in the Islanders. Bottom line is you can analyze the trade deadline any way you want, but who got the impact players that are going to help right. them in the days and weeks ahead? And the New York Islanders got the best player that was available. Forget Peter Forsberg. Yeah. Ryan Smith's being a better player than Peter Forsberg this season. They got him. Next best was probably Billy Guerin in San Jose. Boy, under uh, the category of unfortunate timing, though, this has to be an all-time topper on Mark Messier night with Wayne Gretzky in town, the two <laughs> former faces of the franchise, and I guess Ryan Smith becomes the third former face of the franchise. Being felt from Canada to New York, Mr. Smith comes to Long Island. Plus a forward who's a capital gain for the stretch run, while keeping one of their most valuable assets after all. So the changing face of the Islanders is now set. This is the team that will be together down the stretch. since Edmonton selected him with the sixth overall pick in the 1994 draft. It remains possible, of course, that Smith could re-sign with the Oilers in the summer, which for Kevin Lowe would bump this trade from horrid to brilliant. We're not a better team today with Ryan gone, no question. Ryan's meant so much to this organization, as did some of the players that you mentioned in the past. And, and uh, you know, he's represented uh, the team the way he did on the ice and off the ice and and so we have to factor those things in we have to we know that that's a that's a big part of it that the the fans he was a big fan favorite and it made the decision even that much more difficult brian smith was a player we respected tremendously and um, i think we sent a message to uh, the players in our locker room and to our fans that uh, you know we we uh, were able to add a piece of the puzzle without uh, deleting anyone out of our locker room. The world is still buzzing about trade deadline day 2007. A number of big players moved, including Ryan Smith, now a member of the New York Islanders. Welcome to the Scores Continue.
continuing coverage, everybody. I'm Steve Cooley, along with Al Strachan, Mark Osborne, and Pierre Lebron. We first talk about Ryan Smith. Are you still shocked that Ryan Smith is now an Islander? Will Kevin Lowe regret this move? He certainly will. He said in his press conference that it is not a popularity contest. And I think he's going to find out it's a very unpopularity contest. The fans in Edmonton love their hockey, and they love Ryan Smith, and they'll let Kevin know that they did not like this at all. Yeah, big surprise, no question about it. I mean, your leader on this team, arguably the best player in Edmonton over the course of the last 10 years, very, very surprised on all counts, and uh, why Kevin Lowe could not get him signed to a long-term deal, he is the Edmonton Oilers. Well, I'm less interested about the Edmonton reaction as I am about Garth Snow making the trade of the day. <laughs> this is a guy that we universally, my hands up, laughed at last summer when he was made GM. I'm not saying he's the best GM in the league, but wow, what a job he's done so far this year for the New York Islanders. And that wasn't the only big Quick trade guy, on trainers and losers on this day. So there's no question for me. I know I'm repeating myself there, but Garth Snow and the New York Islanders, this is a team that was already one of the hardest teams to play against in terms of defense, hardworking. Now they got some goals in Zednik and Smith. Ozzie, Big, biggest loser, Brian Burke and the Anaheim Mighty Ducks, doing nothing, needed to help address their back end, did Zippo. Uh, losers in the West, Anaheim, as he said, in the East, Carolina, who did nothing and saw Eric, Eric Cole get hurt. The winners in the West, Dallas and San Jose, the winners in the East, Pittsburgh and the Islanders. They said it wouldn't be a great deadline day with the new CBA. Yeah, Sports right. Center, we're so this glad to join in for another edition. Jay Onright and Holly Horton with you. And the trade deadline day has come and gone, and it was a busy day with lots of trades and lots of transactions, but one overshadowed them all, Jay. And it was amazing because it was after the deadline had ended at 3 o'clock Eastern time. And then this absolute blockbuster shocker of a deal went down. Ryan Smith, the heart and soul of the Edmonton Oilers, is going to Long Island, leaving the only NHL team he's ever played for. Coming back Edmonton's way, a package all too familiar to Oiler fans. Two young prospects, World Junior Team member Ryan O'Mara, and Kent Nilsson's son, Robert Nilsson, as well as a 2007 first-rounder. Ryan Rashog has more on the trade that shocked oil country. We're not a better team today with Ryan gone, no question, but uh, in, the, in the very near future, we'll be a better team. A solemn admission from Oiler General Manager Kevin Lowe on a day he made the toughest decision of his management career, dealing the face of the franchise rather than risk losing him for nothing. I know it has, is the most difficult phone call I ever had to make. And um, I've known Ryan personally and professionally for, for many years. And, uh, you know, I used to think that there wasn't many people that cared more for the game than me, but I, I know one for sure that does. Though it had been widely speculated as a possibility, the deal still came as a shock to Smith, who did not address the media Tuesday out of respect for Mark Messier's ceremony taking place. He was shocked when he, he found out that he had been traded. Smith's uh, uh, referred to as Captain Canada. I mean, he's a, he's a true leader. Uh, he's a gritty, he's a pro uh, playoff uh, performer. He's, uh, he's everything that we uh, want to instill in this organization. We all know how valuable he's, he is as a player, so um, it's, um, it's, it's a real chance to have him. And, uh, wow, we're uh, just excited as everybody else to have him here. In dealing the franchise's longest serving and most popular player, Lowe knows he has further alienated a fan base still stinging from a rapid Jaws fall. Jaws certainly from dropped in here, and that does not happen very often because you usually we're, <laughs> we know when things are coming well in advance. From a hockey perspective, how have they done? Did they get enough? Can you possibly get enough for the face of your franchise? Well, I, I know the players pretty well in terms of who they got. Robert Nielsen is a very skillful player, but he's a perimeter player, and I don't think he's going to be a difference maker for the Edmonton Earls. Ryan O'Mara, if he really achieves to the level he potentially can, would be no better than a third-line player without a lot of offensive input. So it comes down to the first-round pick. Do I think it's a great deal hockey-wise? No, but I understand what Mike Keenan was saying before and what Glenn were saying before in terms of they had to do this. They had to have the preemptive strike because they couldn't get the deal done. Is it the best deal possible? I don't think so. Edmonton's not making the playoffs in the West. Mm -hmm. He's a rental player. You've got to find a spot for this rental player that makes three and a half million dollars. Not many spots open. Why? Because at the end of the deadline, a lot of spots were filled. Kachuk, Garrett, so on and so forth. All the teams that were looking to bulk up had bulked up. So Kevin Lowe has one option, and that's to trade him to the New York Islanders, a deal he had in his pocket for three first round picks, basically. Will that be enough? He's a rental player. We tend to look at him as Mr. Canada, Mr. Oiler. You get him for 25% of the season. 
in a, in a, on a team where he might help your team make the playoffs or you might not make. It's a hope. We spent Apple time giving you a hard time about the Roberto Luongo trade, uh, your last trade with the Florida Panthers. But did you have somewhat of a flashback to the situation you were in with Luongo that Kevin Lowe had with Ryan Smith? Most definitely. Uh, you're in a tough situation. I don't know what the numbers uh, were for, for Kevin on, on uh, Donnie's side or Kevin's side. But you get to a point where you have to make a business decision, and that's what Kevin did. Islanders improve their chances of making the playoffs. Definitely. Shakes up things in the Eastern Conference. Uh, definitely with Toronto and Montreal makes their chore in getting to the playoffs because the Islanders, one of the teams they're competing with, one of those final spots, it's a lot tougher for them as of trade deadline days. We send it back to SportsCenter. Legacy in Edmonton is a hard one to fathom. He became Captain Canada at the World Championship, something he was always available for only because of the Oilers' failure to make the playoffs. He never approached the heights of Gretzky, Messier, Coffey, and company, not even close, yet remained held in the same regard in Edmonton. Face of the franchise is the only way to describe him, and that face was covered in tears for much of the past 24 hours. Our coverage begins with Jamie Thomas in Edmonton. After 12 years, Ryan Smith is officially no longer an Oiler after his shocking trade to the Islanders on Tuesday. Thanks to everybody uh, coming down. It's not what uh, my family and I had in store. One of the unfortunate parts of the deal for Smith was how he found out. I found out from one of you guys, obviously, on the, the media front through my agent. Uh, obviously, I would have liked to find out through Kev. As hard as it is for the former heart and soul of the oil, he refused to say a bad word about Kevin Lowe and the organization. You know, I have no regrets with what Kevin has done. It's not, it's not him. It's not the organization. It's obviously he, he felt it was the best interest at the time, and he just wished me well and just just play hard and like you always do. Now Smith begins his life as an Islander, something he says he's looking forward to. I never thought I'd come to this day. I gotta turn the page, get a chapter, a new chapter in life. And the New York Islanders have, Islanders have given me that opportunity. And I thank them for this. I'm gonna go there and make my best. make the playoffs and win that cup so I can bring it down here in Edmonton. That's where my heart is. Life without Smith continues tomorrow night as the Edmonton Oilers will face the Minnesota Wild trying to keep their fading playoff hopes alive at Rexall Place. Reporting for Sportsnet Connected, Jamie Thomas in Edmonton. As you heard Ryan Smith say, he has to turn the page now, and the Islanders can be confident they'll get everything number 94 has to offer. Louis Jean picks up the story on Long Island. Five months ago, the New York Islanders were viewed as a joke. The Edmonton Oilers were seen as Stanley Cup contenders. Nobody's laughing at the Islanders now. In recent years, the day after the trade deadline was a bit of a downer. The Islanders had unloaded their top players, building for the future. Things have changed. This time, there was a definite buzz. Good players are, you know, make the team better. Great players make everybody on the team better. And I think uh, adding Ryan into the mix, he's not going to just improve our, our, our special teams or improve our, our, uh, our game a little bit. I think he's going to improve everybody in that dressing room. After his first shift, the guys will realize how important he is to our team and how important he's going to be. And he's the kind of guy who wears his heart on his sleeve. And you know, he's not afraid to take a cross check to the back of the head or to the face to uh, you know, get a goal and you know, position himself in front of the net. The Islanders sent two messages with their blockbuster deal. One, to their fans, you have no more excuses to stay home. And two, to the teams battling for the final berth in the Eastern Conference. While you're doing nothing, we're going for it. Since uh, Charles has taken over, it's been, I think, seven years in the making. Um, you know, we've continued to try to put the pieces together here to, to build a winner. Uh, you know, the first three years he took over, we, we, you know, we went from not making the playoffs to making the playoffs. I think it shows everyone in the league that uh, Islanders mean business, and, you know, that gives us the confidence to move forward and, uh, you know, go out and keep winning. Obviously, it, it shows a lot, what, you know, for us, that they want to win now instead of later. Ryan Smith will make his Islanders debut on Thursday night at Nassau Coliseum, and yes, He'll be wearing his familiar number 94. Ted Nolan plans to put him on the same line as Jason Blake and Alexa Yashin as soon as the Russian returns to the lineup. For Sportsnet Connected, I'm Louis Jean in Long Island.
you know, negotiation after negotiation that went south, you know, he says, hey, I've had enough. You know, he expressed a little bit of a, uh, being upset when he was in here with us a week ago saying, why do I have to go through this every time? And uh, so it, it's a fresh start for Ryan. And I think they were tears of uh, sadness. Let's try and move forward, which the Edmonton Oilers and the New York Islanders will both try to do in the next couple of days. New York has sold 500 mini packages since 5 o'clock last night after news of this trade broke. They had a record walk-up crowd last night. What will Ryan Smith's impact on this hockey team be? Well, I think it's going to have a great impact on the hockey team because Ryan Smith, when they put together an international hockey team in Canada and they put together the best 20 or 22 skaters, Ryan Smith's always a part of that package. And, uh, you know, I, I think he brings a lot to the table. I think he's one of the best left-wingers in the league. And when you don't always look at the score sheet for the impact that Ryan Smith makes on a game. I mean, he, he is a very good scorer, and that, that's going to help the Islanders. But he's a gritty guy. He comes to play. He's a guy who gets his nose dirty. You can always count on Ryan Smith. I mean, we saw him talking on TV. He's missing his lower teeth. He's a guy who's going to get a, a, a nick, a cut, and won't miss oh, a again, shift. this is Sports Center. I'm Rod Smith. Ryan Smith wears his heart on his sleeve. It is obvious to anyone who saw him play for Edmonton or saw him say goodbye to Edmonton today. Like many an Oiler fan, Smith is still obviously uh, stunned by yesterday's news. Traded to the Islanders shortly before the deadline when he and Kevin Lowe just couldn't reach a new deal. Smith finally spoke publicly about it this afternoon. An emotional farewell shortly before he boarded a plane for New York. Ryan Rashad was there. Hey, Skitty, we love you. 23 hours after the deal was done, overcome with emotion, Ryan Smith stepped to the podium and did what he thought he would never have to do. He said goodbye to Edmonton. I never thought I'd come to this day. I gotta turn the page, get a chapter, a new chapter in life. And the New York Islanders have, Islanders have given me that opportunity. The question in the minds of many Oilers fans the day after was how did it get to this point? Smith and the Oilers had bridged the gap to within a few hundred thousand dollars. He maintained all along he wanted to stay. But in the 11th hour, the willingness to meet in the middle simply wasn't there. So was it about more than just money? Smith seemed at a loss to explain it. It's it's done right, and obviously we just didn't feel it was it was uh, the right timing, and uh, we felt that it could have done earlier in on the season. We were stuck in our concrete, and they were stuck in theirs. And it's been that way for some time. Last summer, the deal could have been done, likely in the range of five million dollars a season, a number the Oilers balked at, putting off talks. Well, Smith had a huge year, and the asking price shot up. They're moving on, and I got to move on, and uh, it's it's it hurts. There's no question, but I got to find a new way. Now, as for the possibility that Smith could re-sign with the Oilers as an unrestricted free agent in the off-season, well, that was not something that he was willing to discuss. But keep in mind, this is a guy that painted the walls in his basement in Oiler copper and blue, that has always maintained he loves living and playing in this city. Perhaps the last thing he said in his prepared statement shed the most light on that possibility. I'm going to go there and make my best to make the playoffs and win that cup so I can bring it down here in Edmonton. That's where my heart is. Ryan Rashad, TSN, Edmonton.
a feeling with the same sense of drama, it's going to be the same story now as the Islanders make their way onto the ice. Ryan Smith will get the biggest ovation. He's even going to come out after the coaches. That's drama. Here he Well, Danny Flynn, the last assistant coach, so the coaches have all been spoken for. And number 94 will make a dramatic entry. 94, of course, because he was drafted in 94, and here he comes. This is him. series so uh, that was six years ago it's great I mean you know what it kind of puts us back on the map hopefully and uh, you know I think it's good obviously you know with a guy that, that's coming in like uh, Ryan Smith it, it definitely shows the players and and the people in Long Island that we want to win and uh, and we want to win now so I think it's I think it's definitely a good thing